The first time the fox appeared at our family's window, it seemed almost magical. For several mornings, its curious eyes met ours through the glass, as if it had a message to convey. My son, fascinated by the mysterious visitor, insisted on letting it in one day. When he finally did, his face turned pale, and an unexpected series of events unfolded that none of us could have anticipated. The mornings had become an odd ritual, with my son racing to the window to greet the fox that appeared without fail. Each day, the fox would be there, waiting patiently as if it sensed our excitement. My son would press his face against the window, waving eagerly, and the fox would respond with a tilt of its head. It became a comforting routine we all, somehow, started to look forward to. He began to notice odd characteristics about the animal, its strange markings and almost unnatural behavior. Look, Dad, it has a white stripe on its tail, he pointed out one day. The fox's eyes seemed to glow even in daylight, and its agile movements were almost too smooth. It's like it knows us, my son remarked with wonder. These peculiar traits, while intriguing, also raised questions in my mind. Meanwhile, the rest of the family grew uneasy but couldn't deny the fox's peculiar charm. My wife, usually unfazed by wildlife, seemed particularly perturbed. Have you noticed how it just stares, she said one morning, arms crossed. My daughter, though curious, kept her distance. Still, the fox's daily visits continued, a mix of fascination and apprehension bonding us together in this strange new morning routine concerned. My wife suggested contacting animal control, but my son pleaded to let the fox stay a little longer. Please, mom. It's harmless and kind of magical, he insisted, his eyes wide with excitement. Reluctantly, we agreed to give it more time. But any sign of trouble and it goes, my wife warned sternly. Our son nodded, promising to keep a close watch on the fox. The fox's persistent visits began causing tensions within the family, each member grappling with their own anxieties and curiosity. My wife voiced her worries nightly, while my son's attachment to the fox grew stronger. It's like it's waiting for something, he mused out loud. Dinner conversations often circled back to the enigmatic fox, everyone on edge but strangely drawn to its continued presence. Unease settled over our home. That morning, as the fox trotted into our living room, my son showed the first signs of fear when he met its gaze. His hand trembled as he slowly opened the window to let it in. Once inside, the fox paused, looking directly at my son with an eerie intensity. Are you okay? I asked, noticing his sudden pallor. He nodded faintly but couldn't tear his eyes away from the animal. The rest of the family watched in astonishment as the fox made itself at home, sniffing around and almost acting like it knew the place. It trotted confidently through the living room, pausing now and then to examine a piece of furniture or an object. This is unreal, my wife whispered, her eyes wide. The fox seemed oddly comfortable, as if it belonged here, further baffling us all. The tension was thick, everyone waiting for something to happen. My daughter clutched her toy, watching the fox with a mix of fear and fascination. My wife kept her distance, her eyes darting between the fox and our son. What now? She asked quietly. No one answered, the silence hanging heavy. We all stood frozen. The fox's calm presence both unsettling and strangely mesmerizing. Something felt inevitable. My son, pale and silent, watched the fox intently, as if communicating with it. He tracked its every move, his brow furrowed in concentration. What's going on in that head of yours? I wondered aloud, but he didn't respond. The fox seemed equally engaged, occasionally glancing back at my son. It was as if an unspoken dialogue was unfolding, leaving the rest of us outsiders to whatever connection had formed. His change in demeanor alarmed my wife and me. This wasn't the son we knew. He became unusually reserved, and his once lively eyes grew distant. What's wrong, champ? I asked, but he'd just shrug and return his gaze to the fox. My wife, increasingly uneasy, whispered, something's off. Our son's attachment to the fox was growing stronger each day, and it concerned us deeply. The sight of the fox so calmly nested in our space was unnerving, suggesting it wouldn't be so easy to make it leave. It curled up on the rug, almost like a pet, 
its eyes flicking towards my son occasionally. It's like it belongs here, my wife murmured. Even our dog seemed unsettled, keeping a wary distance. The fox's presence felt both invasive and strangely natural, creating an odd dynamic in our home. The next few days were marked by unsettling events. Household objects moved, small items missing, and a pervasive feeling of being watched. My wife's favorite vase was found on the kitchen counter, despite her swearing she'd left it in the living room. Did you move this? She asked, her voice trembling. Our son denied it, but the confusion in his eyes suggested he was also on edge. The fox's influence seemed to be growing. My son seemed particularly affected, sleepwalking and experiencing vivid nightmares involving the fox. One night, I found him wandering the hallway, eyes wide open but clearly not awake. Back to bed, buddy. I guided him gently. The next morning, he described dreams where the fox led him through dark, whispering woods. My wife, worried, said, This isn't normal. But whenever we suggested distancing from the fox, he grew defensive. My wife, increasingly worried, suggested seeking professional help, but my son resisted, insisting everything was fine. Just leave it alone, mom. It's not hurting anyone, he'd argue, frustration evident in his tone. My wife, torn between concern and his pleas, sighed deeply. We need to do something, she said, her voice wavering. Despite his assurances, the tension in our home was palpable, growing stronger with each passing day. Despite his assurances, it was hard to ignore the growing sense of dread that filled our home. The atmosphere grew heavier, each day feeling more oppressive than the last. It's like something's watching us all the time, my daughter said, eyes wide. My wife and I exchanged worried glances. Even the dog seemed on edge, growling at corners for no obvious reason. The fox's presence was having an undeniable impact on all of us. My wife and I found ourselves blaming the fox for these disturbances, but our son grew more protective of it. It's not the fox's fault, he'd yell if we voiced our concerns. His defensiveness only added to our unease. The more we tried to distance him from the fox, the deeper his attachment seemed to grow. Our efforts to restore normalcy fell flat as the mysterious animal held an inexplicable sway over him. This pushed me to investigate further, to understand why this fox had such a hold on our family. I started reading up on fox behavior and local wildlife, but nothing seemed to explain our situation. One evening, while researching, I stumbled upon folk stories about guardian foxes. Could it be? I pondered aloud. Though skeptical, the idea planted itself in my mind. I knew I had to dig deeper and find answers. Strange footprints started appearing around the house, leading to and from the window where the fox first appeared. The prints were unlike any I'd seen before, strange patterns interwoven with the usual paw marks. Look at this. I showed my wife her eyes widening. She nodded, a mix of fear and curiosity flashing across her face. These footprints added another layer to the mystery, urging me to find out more. Curious, I installed a camera near the window, hoping to catch some explanation for the fox's erratic behavior. My son watched as I set it up, a hint of disapproval in his eyes. It's just to understand what's going on, I reassured him. Night after night, I reviewed the footage, eager for clues. What I found was bewildering. The fox wasn't alone. Shadows of other animals or figures seemed to accompany it. Reviewing the footage, I saw the fox wasn't alone. Shadows of other animals or figures accompanied it, but their shapes were indistinct. I replayed the clip, trying to discern what was lurking in the background. This is bizarre, I muttered to myself. My wife watched from the kitchen, her face tinged with concern. The unclear figures added another unsettling layer to our already bizarre situation, compelling me to investigate further. Each night, the fox seemed to lead an invisible entourage to our home, deepening the family's unease. The shadows on the footage grew more haunting with every replay, their indistinct forms stirring our imaginations. It's like a parade of ghosts, my daughter remarked nervously. My wife's worry lines deepened, her gaze often fixed on the camera's live feed. The feeling that we were not alone became impossible to shake. As we pieced together these clues, a pattern emerged. The fox's visits seemed to correlate with our son's nightmares. 
Each night he had bad dreams. The footage showed more activity. There's definitely something connecting them. I told my wife as we reviewed the recordings again. Anxiety gnawed at us, the fox's presence becoming even more disturbing. Our son remained oblivious to our discoveries, his connection to the animal unbroken. Determined to uncover the truth, I decided to involve my neighbors and seek their observations. Tom, you seen anything strange lately? I asked my friend down the street. We gathered a few neighbors who agreed to keep watch. Mrs. Dawson, always eager for some excitement, volunteered instantly. Let's find out what's going on, she proclaimed. Though skeptical, their involvement offered a glimmer of hope in solving this mystery. Though skeptical, our neighbors started keeping watch, and one night, Mrs. Dawson reported seeing the fox lead a procession of animals through the neighborhood. It was the strangest thing, she said, her voice trembling with excitement. I gathered everyone to discuss her sighting. The confirmation of the fox's nocturnal entourage brought a mix of relief and dread. What does it mean? Someone asked, but no one had an answer. This sighting confirmed my worst fears. Something truly strange was happening. The realization that our fox wasn't alone sent chills down my spine. My wife, pale and quiet, nodded as Mrs. Dawson recounted her experience. We need to find out more, I said, feeling the weight of responsibility pressing down. The mystery was deepening, and with it, a sense of urgency to protect my family grew stronger. Armed with this new information, I confronted my son, demanding to know what he knew about the fox. Hey, buddy, do you know why the fox comes here? I asked gently. He looked down, his face a mask of worry. It talks to me in my dreams, Dad, he finally whispered. My heart sank, the pieces of the puzzle falling into place. What does it say? I pressed. He hesitated, visibly distressed, before confiding that the fox seemed to speak to him in his dreams, leading him to a particular spot in the woods. It shows me this place, says I need to go there, he explained, his voice barely audible. My wife, overhearing, gasped in horror. These words changed everything. The fox wasn't just a curious animal. It had a purpose and it involved our son. My wife was horrified, insisting we seek help, but I felt compelled to accompany my son to this location. We need to talk to someone, she urged, panic edging her voice. But I shook my head. We'll find out what this is ourselves first, I said firmly. Reluctantly, she agreed, her eyes filled with worry. The decision was made, my son and I would venture into the woods. That afternoon, we planned our visit to the mysterious spot. My son described the location from his dreams, sketching a rough map. Here, Dad, this is where it wants us to go, he pointed. I nodded, packing a flashlight and some supplies. My wife hovered nearby, anxiety etched into her face. Be careful, she whispered, hugging our son tightly. With everything ready, we prepared for whatever awaited us. My son and I trekked into the woods, guided by his recollection of the fox's vivid instructions. The trees stood tall and silent, their shadows casting eerie patterns on the ground. This way, my son whispered, his eyes locked forward. We moved carefully, the crunch of leaves underfoot the only sound. The deeper we went, the thicker the air seemed to grow, adding a sense of foreboding to our journey. We arrived at a clearing marked with unusual symbols, which my son said appeared in his dreams. The symbols were etched into the ground, forming strange patterns. These are exactly like in my dreams, he said, pointing to one particularly intricate design. I knelt down to get a closer look, trying to make sense of the markings. The sight filled me with equal parts awe and unease, leaving us both speechless. The area exuded an eerie calm, making us wary of our surroundings. The stillness felt unnatural, as though the very air held its breath. My son clung to my side, his eyes darting around, taking in every detail. Do you feel that? He asked, his voice barely a whisper. I nodded, my senses heightened. Every rustle of leaves seemed amplified, each small sound making us jump. We couldn't shake the feeling of being watched. My son pointed to a specific spot where we started digging, eventually unearthing a small, ancient box wrapped in decayed fabric. The soil was loose, making it easier to dig, but the task felt monumental. 
This is it, my son said, excitement and fear mingling in his voice. As the box emerged, its age was apparent, the fabric barely holding together. We exchanged a glance, both feeling the gravity of what we had found. The box looked old and mysterious, its contents a riddle to be solved. It was small, with intricate carvings barely visible beneath the dirt and decay. What do you think is inside? My son asked, his eyes wide with curiosity. I shook my head, examining the box from various angles. Only one way to find out, I replied, feeling a mix of excitement and apprehension. Whatever was inside, it felt significant, almost sacred. We decided to carry the box back home, not knowing if its discovery would bring answers or more questions. The weight of the box seemed to press on us with each step a physical reminder of the unknown. Careful, I warned as my son held it tightly. The journey back felt longer, the woods now filled with shadows that seemed to follow us. We knew this box held something important, but its true nature remained a mystery. That night, back at home, we hesitated before opening the box, the air thick with anticipation. We gathered around the kitchen table, the box placed carefully in the center. Are you ready? I asked, looking at my son. He nodded, his eyes locked on the mysterious object. My wife's fingers trembled as she brushed against its surface. The room felt charged with electricity, every second dragging as we prepared to uncover its secrets. Within it, we found an assortment of old photographs, strange trinkets, and a journal filled with cryptic notes. Each item seemed carefully placed, as though they carried individual significance. Look at this, my wife said, picking up a faded photograph. The journal's leather cover was worn with age, its pages filled with handwritten notes. This is incredible, I muttered, starting to flip through the pages. These discoveries hinted at a past deeply connected to ours. The journal told the story of previous inhabitants of our home, their life closely intertwined with the same fox. The notes spoke of sightings and interactions eerily similar to our own experiences. They knew the fox as we do, my son said, reading over my shoulder. The photographs captured moments of joy and fear, painting a vivid picture of a family long gone but not forgotten. Their connection to the fox was undeniable and profound. This revelation tied our present to a troubling past, suggesting the fox's visits were a recurring phenomenon. It's like the fox has been here forever, my wife whispered, her face pale. The journal's entries span decades, some dating back a century. Why us? I wondered aloud. Every page we turned deep in the mystery, the fox's presence now a bridge between generations. We realized that understanding its purpose could hold the key to our own story. My son grew more protective of the fox, convinced it was a guardian rather than a threat. He argued passionately, insisting the fox had a purpose. It's here to help us, he said, eyes wide with conviction. Despite the strange occurrences and our growing unease, his faith in the fox never wavered. This belief only deepened as we continued to uncover more about the mysterious animal and its impact on our lives. We worked through the journal together, trying to decipher its message and intent. The faded handwriting and cryptic notes presented a challenge. But we persisted. Look at this symbol, Dad, my son pointed out one evening. Each entry seemed to tell a piece of a larger story, weaving a complex tapestry of past and present. Despite our efforts, many questions remained, and the fox's true purpose still eluded us. Unexpectedly, my son fell ill, his condition mirroring the symptoms described in the journal's final entries. He became pale and weak, struggling to stay awake. He needs to rest, my wife said, her voice tight with worry. We hurried to care for him, placing cool cloths on his forehead and urging him to hydrate. The similarities to the journal's accounts were undeniable, adding a new layer of urgency to our quest for answers. Desperate, we reached out to historians and animal experts, hoping to find a rational explanation. Phone calls and emails consumed our days as we sought anyone with knowledge about the fox and its historical significance. There has to be someone who knows, I said determinately. As each specialist shared their insights, we pieced together fragments of understanding, hoping to uncover the truth that linked our son's illness to the fox's presence. 
Each expert we consulted led us closer to understanding the true nature of the fox and its historical significance. It appears this fox has appeared in folklore as a guardian spirit, explained Dr. Klein, a local historian. Connections between the fox, the house, and the journal began to form. It's like a puzzle, my wife said quietly. With each insight, the fox's role became clearer, yet the full picture remained just out of reach. The fox, it seemed, had been revered by the house's previous owners, believed to be a spiritual protector or perhaps a harbinger. Old documents and anecdotes painted a picture of a family who, like ours, had experienced strange events. They saw it as a guardian. My son read aloud from an old letter. This shared reverence for the fox throughout the house's history brought us closer to understanding its true nature and purpose. My wife's anxiety grew pushing her to consider selling the house and leaving the mystery behind. We can't stay here, she argued, her voice trembling. The stress was taking its toll on her, and I could see the weariness in her eyes. Maybe starting fresh somewhere else is the answer, she suggested. Her perspective, though understandable, clashed with my own growing determination to uncover the fox's secrets and save our son. But I couldn't shake the feeling that solving this would save my son. Each clue seemed to pull me deeper into the mystery, fueling my resolve. We're so close, I told my wife, trying to reassure her. Despite the fear and uncertainty, leaving felt like giving up. Solving the riddle of the fox seemed intertwined with our son's recovery. I knew that finding the truth was crucial for him and for all of us. As urgency heightened, I coordinated with local authorities to inspect our home's history further and understand how previous tenants managed the fox. We scoured records, old newspapers, and property documents, discovering mentions of strange happenings and mysterious rituals. These past owners faced similar events, the historian noted. The deeper we delved, the more intricate the connection between the fox and the house appeared. This historical insight added another layer to our growing understanding. We found records of ancient rituals, including a ceremony designed to either banish or welcome the fox's spirit. The rituals were detailed, complex, and fascinating. This could be the key, I said, studying the instructions. The ceremonies included chants, offerings, and specific artifacts, some of which were mentioned in the journal. My wife, though skeptical, agreed we had to try. The decision was made to perform the ritual, hoping it held the answers we sought. Convinced this could help, we gathered the necessary materials to perform the ritual, a blend of skepticism and hope guiding our actions. My son and I collected candles, incense, and the artifacts mentioned in the journal. These must be important, I said as we carefully prepared each item. Despite our doubts, a sense of purpose fueled us. We have to give it a try, my wife said, her eyes reflecting a mix of fear and hope. The night we chose for the ceremony coincided with a full moon, adding to the atmosphere of suspense and anticipation. The moonlight bathed our backyard in an ethereal glow, casting long shadows that danced with the evening breeze. This has to work, my wife whispered as we arranged everything according to the journal's instructions. The air felt charged with energy Every sound amplified in the stillness. Our family stood united, ready to face whatever the ritual would reveal. My son seemed more alert and aware, his expressions suggesting he knew more than he shared. Are you sure about this? I asked, searching his face for any hint of doubt. He nodded firmly, his eyes reflecting a determination that belied his age. I'm ready, Dad, he said quietly. His calm presence gave us strength. Although my wife's worried glances revealed her lingering doubts, we took a deep breath, knowing the night ahead would be crucial. We prepared ourselves for what the night might reveal. Each family member had a role. My wife held the journal, our daughter lit the candles, and I set up the artifacts. The atmosphere grew tense, each action deliberate and measured. Stay close, I instructed, feeling the weight of the moment. We formed a circle, the flickering candlelight illuminating our faces. The fox sat a few feet away, its eyes gleaming with an unsettling knowingness. Everything felt poised on a knife's edge. As the ritual commenced, tensions ran high. 
My wife began reading the incantations from the journal, her voice wavering but steady. Focus. I reminded everyone, sensing the gravity of the situation. Each word seemed to reverberate through the night air, creating an eerie symphony. The fox sat motionless, its eyes fixed on us with an intensity that made our hearts race. Every second felt elongated, our senses heightened. We were in uncharted territory, relying solely on the journal's guidance. We followed the instructions meticulously, reciting incantations, and using artifacts from the journal. Next, light the incense, my wife said, her voice barely audible. Our daughter moved quickly, the sweet scent mingling with the night air. Each step felt both foreign and familiar, as if we had practiced this many times before. The fox remained an unflinching witness to our actions. With every chant, we felt a shift, a subtle change in the atmosphere, urging us to continue. The atmosphere grew thicker, the fox watching us with those same curious, knowing eyes. Its gaze seemed to pierce through the darkness, connecting with each of us in turn. Keep going, I urged, sensing we were approaching a pivotal moment. The air became almost palpable, carrying a weight that pressed down on us. My wife's voice grew stronger, more confident with each chant. The ritual items seemed to hum with energy, their significance undeniable. We were close, so close. Each family member played a role, and our combined efforts seemed to bridge the past with the present. My son held a small artifact, its cool metal a steadying presence in his hand. This feels right, he whispered. My wife continued the chants, her voice unwavering now. Our daughter's steady hands kept the candles burning, their light a beacon in the darkness. The connection between us grew stronger, each action reinforcing our unity and purpose. The ritual was nearing its culmination. As we neared the ritual's completion, a sudden noise outside disrupted our focus. The fox stirred, signaling the culmination of our efforts. What was that? My daughter whispered, eyes wide with fear. We all turned towards the window, ears straining to catch any follow-up sound. The fox's alertness told us something significant was happening. Stay calm, I said, hoping to keep everyone grounded. The tension was at its peak, each of us waiting for the final revelation. We braced ourselves for the outcome, unsure if we had succeeded in welcoming or dispelling what haunted our home. The final words of the incantation hung in the air, their echo fading into the stillness. The fox's gaze softened, a subtle shift in its posture suggesting we were about to learn the truth. Hold on. I whispered to my family, our breaths synchronized. The air felt charged, as if holding its breath alongside us. The moment of reckoning had arrived. As the ritual completed and the air settled, we gathered around my son, whose condition seemed to improve almost immediately. His cheeks gained a hint of color, and the dark circles under his eyes began to fade. Are you feeling better? I asked cautiously. He nodded, the small smile forming on his lips. Our relief was palpable, the tension that had gripped our family loosening its hold, if only slightly. He walked over to the fox, who nudged a final item from beneath its fur, a hidden letter from the home's original owners. My son picked it up delicately, turning it over in his hands. The aged paper crackled softly as he unfolded it. Look, he said excitedly, handing the letter to me. The handwriting was old-fashioned but legible, a bridge to the past we hadn't anticipated. The fox watched intently as if guarding this last secret. The letter explained the fox's role as a guardian of the family's secrets and wealth, revealing that its visits were a call for us to uncover our hidden inheritance and safeguard it. It's protecting us, my son said in awe. Each word we read pulled us deeper into the history of our home and the mysterious fox. We realized this wasn't just about us, it was a legacy we had unknowingly inherited. As we processed this revelation, the fox seemed to nod in approval before trotting peacefully back out the window. It paused briefly, as if acknowledging our newfound understanding, then disappeared into the night. We stood in silence, the weight of the letter and its implications settling over us. It's gone, my daughter whispered, her voice a mix of relief and sadness. The fox's exit marked the end of one chapter and the beginning of another. 
we were left with the truth and the newfound understanding that the fox had been there to guide, not harm. We've been looking at this all wrong, my wife said, shaking her head. The fear and confusion made way for clarity and a sense of purpose. This mysterious guardian had woven itself into our lives, transforming chaos into a mission. We felt a strange, newfound respect for the unseen forces that had guided us. The clue confirmed. The fox was indeed guiding us to uncover and protect our inheritance against impending danger. This realization filled us with resolve. We need to make sure we do this right, I said, looking at my family. The fox's intentions were clear now, and our role in this unfolding story had been defined. We weren't just passive players. We had a responsibility to uphold and protect what we had discovered. As the reality sunk in, my son began to regain his usual demeanor lighter and more at ease. His laughter filled the house once more, a melody we had sorely missed. I feel so much better, Dad, he said, his eyes twinkling. My wife's relief was evident in her every action, a weight lifted from her shoulders. The transformation in our son mirrored the positive shift in our family's dynamic. Our family felt a renewed sense of purpose, understanding the fox's visits and actions. The discovery of our inheritance and the fox's role filled us with a mission to protect and cherish what had been passed down to us. We have a responsibility now, my wife said, her voice firm. This extraordinary journey had brought us closer together, each of us recognizing the importance of our family's legacy and future. Though the fox rarely appeared after that, its impact on our lives remained unforgettable. Every so often, we would catch a glimpse of its reddish fur at the edge of the woods, a silent reminder of the guardian that had changed our fate. It's still watching over us, my son would say, a smile on his face. The fox had left, but its presence, both physical and spiritual, left an indelible mark on our family. We knew that our family had been forever changed, stronger and more united, thanks to our extraordinary visitor. The fox's legacy became a part of our daily lives, shaping how we interacted with each other and our surroundings. We'll always be connected. My wife whispered one evening as we stood by the window where it all began. Our journey had brought us here, wiser and more connected than ever before.